The ideas expressed in the following presentations are those of the speakers and do not necessarily reflect the views of ACI or its committees. ACI web sessions are recorded at ACI conventions or other concrete industry events and will be made available for viewing free of charge for one week. Thereafter, they will be archived on the ACI website or added to ACI's online CEU program depending on their content. Good afternoon, everyone. Uh, thank you, Dr. Kim, for the introduction. The presentation is about uh, pre-stressed concrete beams with CFRP. We did this research at Portland State University with uh, Dr. Uh, Rod. This is the uh, structure of my presentation. It's about like a little of introduction, and then I'll explain the experimental program. Uh, and then we'll discuss the results and make some conclusion. Um, I thought I would give a little introduction about pre-stressed concrete, but uh, due to the short time, I'll just, it's basically like producing an upward deflection so that in the service load we could have a structural element with a, with a zero deflection or uncracked uh, members. How to uh, put these forces in the concrete members? The most common way is to use the steel strands, the seven wire low relaxation steel strands. The only problem with, uh, with these strands is that uh, they corrode. Uh, so engineers look for uh, alternatives and one of the best alternatives is FRP, which could be like carbon, aramid or glass or others, uh, which is basically a large number of fibers embedded and combined together with a resin matrix. It could be uh, in different forms, um, like grids, rebars, or strands, or sheets. Uh, we'll focus on the rebars because we'll use it as uh, strands to pre-stressed uh, beams. Here is the, um, some of the properties. We can see that it is, sorry, it is much lighter than the steel strands and it is stronger with a reasonable modulus of elasticity. Um, this is the stress-strain relationship for the uh, different kinds of, uh, of FRP with the steel strands that commonly use and you can see the CFRP is the most interesting material here so we are going to use that. In, in summary, like the, the FRP is, or the CFRP in particular, is very strong, very, very light, and it has some uh, advantages of like it's a, um, it's a corrosion resistant material and it's non-magnetic. But the problem with it is that it's a, it's a brittle material and uh, it doesn't have, or it's, it's, it has very low transverse uh, tensile uh, strength and it has an initial, high initial cost. One of the problems, as we said, it has, a, it has low transverse tensile strength, so it's hard to, uh, to grab these materials, and these are just some of the ideas how to grab these materials, is like either mechanical or bone type anchors. And basically, like the mechanical is easier to use, but the bond type anchors uh, is better because uh, it can uh, uniformly distribute the lateral load to the bars so that it don't uh, doesn't uh, break. Uh, in terms of flexure behavior, ACI has some uh, guidelines, and um, I I don't have to like include all of it here, but like. Uh, you can see ACI for 40, 4R, or 1R, uh, 4R for pre-stressed concrete, and uh, 1R for reinforced concrete, and has some like reduction factors, environmental reduction factors as well for pre-stressed concrete, for reinforced concrete, and then the principle of, of analysis, uh, the analysis and design is basically the same as uh, um, steel members but uh, like we have to use the appropriate mechanical properties. Some of the problems with using FRP in concrete members is that uh, we don't yet fully understood the fluctuate behavior and uh, because it like associates with many problems one of the biggest uh, problems that uh, the bond issues that is 
always associated with the uh, with flag with the FRP members and also we need to understand more about transverse and development length of the bars and the concrete and the mechanical properties of FRPs are very different and each manufacturer say like different um, standards of um, like the mechanical properties and then finally like the the anchorage system that we can use with FRP has not developed yet as a suf sufficient one as like that we usually use with the steel strands. So we started the experimental program. Uh, we uh, casted and tested four beams, uh, all of them like 14 feet long, three, 13 and a half clear span, five and a half by 10 as a cross section and all of them were pre-stressed with one uh, half inch CFRP strand. Um, we started with testing the materials to see the mechanical properties of it. We tested four sample, four ASTM samples, and we found that 331 is the tensile, tensile strength, and uh, about 20,000 ksi the uh, the modulus of elasticity. And then we designed the beams, um, like we designed four beams. Uh, we started with the first one and then we looked at the problems and we tried to solve the problems as we go through. The beams were designed so that the reinforcing ratio is over like the balanced ratio so that we would go with the desired failure of concrete crash rather than the CFRP rupture. Uh, but we kept it close to the balance ratio so that we can utilize uh, as much as we can of the CFRP force. Uh, the shear reinforcement, uh, we started with the minimum reinforce shear reinforcement and then we start increasing the, uh, the steel stirrups so that we provide more confinement to help with bonding issues for the CFRP strands. Here I just included some photos of like this is the pretensioning process. Um, this is the system we use to pretension the uh, the beams, uh, load cell, and this is the strain gauges, the installation, and then four more can casting the the beams. Here is like the cylinders and curing. It was in the summer, so we used some plastic to keep the moisture of the beams. And then here are some testing uh, for the concrete. Here are some numbers of the uh, concrete properties. We uh, we tried to keep it between 7,000 and 7,500 psi. The concrete. It's a. Uh, and then we tested also modulus of elasticity and modulus of rupture. I like it, this is a mistake we didn't i didn't include the equations of aci 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 it's basically like the modulus of elasticity and the modulus of rupture here r is what we get experimentally this is how we tested the beams like uh, we have uh, three lvdt's two of them to measure the slippage at the end and then one lvdt to uh, measure the deflection with the load cell and two point loads. Uh, these are pictures of the end LVDTs. This is how it looked like in the lab and go to the mm, results. And the first thing I wanna present here is that the stress strain relationship of the uh, CFRP and that's during the, um, the pre-stressing process. Um, the black one is the actual uh, uh, relationship based on the uh, strain gauges that were attached to the uh, uh, to the CFRB bar. The um, uh, uh, the red one is the average of the ASTM uh, samples that we tested, and then the green one is that what we used in the uh, is the average between them, what we used in the, our calculations for the analytical model. Here is the force releasing. I just highlighted the effective stress, which is, which was measured immediately after the uh, immediately before the the flexural tests. And this figure just show the location of the strain gauges along the CFRP, and then we, like we can um, draw the um, the uh, stress profile along the beam based on these strain gauges. This is. 
um, this is to show the difference between the first three beams and the last beam, the fourth beam, which we use some new technique uh, to, um, so the f first three beams, uh, it's, a, it's a normal pretensioning beam using CFRP. Uh, the force will translate to the concrete by um, by the bone, let's say, using the bond between the CFRP and the concrete. However, in the last beam, we used a new technique. We anchored, actually, we anchored the, the CFRP at the ends of the beam. So we don't allow any, any slippage at the end. And uh, in addition to the bond between this throated steel tube, we added... Uh, two hex nuts, if you can see, and washers, so that it can have some some bearing uh, pressure between these steel washers and the concrete, which may would make sure that uh, we don't allow any slippage there. This is only for beam number four, with some special anchor system at the end. So I'm gonna like these are I'm gonna present the the results of each beam separately so that you can see the difference. So the first beam we had a brittle early failure and that's because of the slippage actually at the end. Uh, I highlight this is the slippage moment of the beam and uh, we I zoomed in here. You can see this is cycle two. This is cycle three, cycle four, and then the last cycle, which is cycle six. Uh, we can see the slippage increased um, uh, a little by little until we had a failure with full, uh, with it like a full debonding uh, between the CFRP and the concrete. And that was the reason of the failure. You can. I also took a picture here so that you can see the. It's a poor bonding between CFRP and the concrete. Um, you can also notice here. This is uh, like before. Before testing, you see the LVDT here, and then how much it slipped inside uh, at the failure. Uh, for the second beam, we increased the uh, the confinement by putting like actually we doubled the number of steel stirrups uh, at the shear span and then uh, we went um, uh, this beam did much better than the first beam we went all the way to like um, 35 cube foot moment capacity um, but also at the end we had a slippage failure you can see the slippage was okay and then until we went to the maximum moment and then it just slipped and we had that, that debonding failure. For beam number, oh, this is the pictures, the same location of failure uh, for the first two beams. Um, for the third beam, we even increased the uh, confinement more by putting more stirrups there. We didn't have a slippage, like this is just, this is not countable slippage, but the problem, and unfortunately, like the concrete gave up at uh, strain 0.025, which was early to us, we expected to go more. So we couldn't go further with this one, with this beam, we couldn't utilize more uh, lows at the CFRP. Then we went to the fourth beam. Oh, this is the pictures of the third beam where like it had a concrete crash and at the mid span. <laughs> On the fourth beam, we locked the CFRP at the end so that we didn't allow any slippage at the end. Uh, and that actually helped uh, a lot. Could utilize the full strength of CFRP uh, on uh, this beam and you can see here we have no slippage at all and uh, it was just a, we didn't have a problem with the CFRP the, we um, it was us designed we utilized almost the full strength of the CFRP uh, but the concrete failed as we designed it because the reinforcing ratio was more than the the balance ratio so this was we could say that we utilized the full capacity of this beam by uh, anchoring the, the CFRP at the ends and uh, we developed the or we improved the moment capacity about 39% compared with the previous beams 
Um, this is the photo of failures of this beam. Uh, it failed at mid-span concrete crash. Uh, this is just to compare the crack width between like beam number four and beam number two, uh, four with with end anchors and two with uh, without anchors. You can see because we don't lose any tension force, so that the crack width is much less for beam number four. And this, if we put all the beams together, we can see the difference between like beam number four and then the rest of the beams. Um, this beam, beam number, four, beam number one, failed very early because of the um, we don't have any confinement for the uh, for the CFRP, and it uh, just debonded very early. Those two beams were better, but you know because of the slippage that we have, we didn't go all the way up to here to utilize all the forces at CFRP. And talking in numbers, we can compare the beams using like some um, ductility index or we call it deformability to make it different with the steel because FRP, uh, FRPs don't um, yield. So we use two equations to, uh, to evaluate the deformability of the beams and uh, we can see that beam number four and beam number two have have the best performance but comparing beam number four beam number four is like 34 percent higher capacity um, so we could say like it has much better performance uh, this is the figure again uh, is that like this the capacity comparing beam number four with beam number two is like 34 percent more um, th I'm just put some like two quotes from two professionals basically saying that almost always the uh, what controls the design is the bond strength strength rather than the uh, nominal strength also we did an analytical model uh, to predict the behavior of pre-stressed concrete beams and I'm gonna go through this very quickly Basically, we have the, uh, the me uh, mechanical properties of the CFRP, of the concrete. We could have used these equations, but like we have, we tested the beams, uh, we tested cylinders to have the stress-strain relationship of the concrete, and we used it in the model. And basically, it's, a, it's like sectional analysis, and then we got the moment curvature. From the moment curvature, we could have the moment deflection and uh, these are like just comparing the model with the real uh, strain in the concrete measured in the mid-span we can see that it's it's a good agreement between the model and the actual strain in the concrete and then this is the moment deflection curves the um, orange let's say the orange color is the analytical model and then this is the experimental and uh, we could say from these four figures that if we if the model had account for the bonding issue we could have much better agreement between them as we can see here we don't have bonding so this has more kind of they match more than the others because here you can see that it's overestimated because we don't account for the bonding in the model. Uh, another, like, this is the final comparison that we did, is that uh, what if we pre stressed these beams with, um, with just teal strands? So we took the same beams, we chose beam number two and beam number four, and like the same beam, the same cross-section, the, um, the same span, and we replaced the CFRP strands with the steel strands and we designed both beams uh, to carry the same service load with n cracked section based on ACI and this is how it look like I mean if we had steel will be the blue one you can see uh, like um, FRP will show higher force because it is stronger but less ductility uh, intend to compare them like in numbers what we did here this is like stating all the numbers and then what we did here is that we divided the numbers of the CFRP 
beams on the numbers of steel and we can see like here 25% for beam number two like 25 percent more moment capacity but like the, the ductility is like only 64 percent of what we would get if we had steel strands uh, for beam number four because we solved the bonding issues we went to 50 percent more capacity if we had steel but like only 84 percent ductility performance the conclusions um, it's basically like based on the results that we get is that the mechanical properties of the CFRP bars that we get is higher than what's stated by the manufacturer. The expensive growth that we used to develop this anchorage system for the CFRP was successful and like this is basically for, for maybe uh, the upcoming research is that to test these anchors to see if we can use it in precess concrete applications. The minimum shear reinforcing by ACI might not be adequate for FRP members because we need more confinement for uh, the to solve the bonding issues. Basically, the total losses was about 7.3 percent in 21 days, and that's the period between casting the concrete and testing the beam. The technique that we used by anchoring the CFRP at the ends of the beam completely prevented the slippage and improved the uh, moment capacity by 39%. Development length is obviously more than 108 D-bar based on our research because that's what we provided and it was not enough. The analytical model reasonably predicted the behavior but it would be much better if we account for the uh, for the bonding um, the CFRB concrete bonding characteristic and then uh, finally comparing CFRB beams with beams same beams pre-stressed with steel strands FRP beams showed higher strength but uh, less ductility and uh, thank you and if you have any questions Yes, we d we we did, but uh, it will be in a different paper. It's especially about bonding and development length and transfer length. But it was I can give you it was about like the average is about like um, a 20, 21, 22, 24. That's for beam number one, two, three inches. Reinforcing skin. Reinforcing bars and CFRP bond. Reinforcing. Oh, the uh, the that carry the shear reinforcing. Yeah, w these are like we try to make it like uh, bondless with the steel with the concrete so that we it didn't add any flexural uh, capacity to the beam. So or the yeah, we ignored the the steel. Yeah. It's a 0.25 wires, and uh, we try to make it like smooth, as smooth as possible, so that it doesn't have bond with concrete.